Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you all a basic guide to Fusion nodes inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So, on the Fusion page, when you have a media clip on your timeline, you can select that clip, and then you're going to see a media in and a media output. So, Fusion allows you to add nodes, which each have a specific function between your media in and your media out in order to transform your clip. Now, a node graph can get a little more complicated than that. You might have multiple inputs, or you might have another node like a mask, which controls which part of the screen will actually apply the effect and which one will not. So in the end, using nodes is going to be both more complicated, but also a bit more powerful than just using the standard effects, which you can find at the top left on both the cut, edit, and fusion pages. So if we actually open up the effects menu, all of the nodes that are available to you on the Fusion page are going to show up in this Tools menu. You can also expand the Tools menu if you want to see each category one by one. So if you actually go through all of these, there are quite a lot of options that you can use out of the box for your effects. Of course, you also have your standard effects, which would be located under Open Effects, and you can find that also on the Edit page up here in effects, open effects. And these are the ones you can just drag and drop onto a clip. So if I hover over a clip, you could see something like a vortex effect and how it might look like if you dragged it onto one of your clips. But on the Fusion page, all of these are going to be available as a node which you can position wherever you want on this graph in order to give you your final media output. So just to go down through some of the basic nodes over here, you could go to the color category and we can find a brightness contrast node. So a good trick for adding a node along this chain of connection between media in and media out is to actually just drag the node from over here down onto the start of the line between media in and media out. So when you get this blue line to show up on the left side and you let go, it's automatically going to add it along the chain. So now instead of media in feeding directly to media out, media in goes to the brightness contrast node, and then brightness contrast has its own output indicated by this white box, which feeds to the media out. So that means before we have our final generated output from the fusion page, we have to have the effect of the brightness contrast node apply. So each of the nodes are going to have their own inspector settings up over here, kind of similar to if you had applied a effect directly onto a video clip on the edit page, and you'll be able to change the settings for each of these. Note that the, you also have keyframing diamonds if you need to animate any of these properties across time. So if I want to make our scene brighter, I can just increase the gain here. So if I wanted to make this scene a little bit brighter, I might do something like increase the gain by a little bit. And this will end up being one part of our effect that we try to apply on the Fusion Nodes page. But then we may want to go a step further than that by having something like a blur node. So another place we can look to for basic nodes is this bar right above the node graph. So you can see common tools here like text plus, a color corrector node or color curves. And over here on the far right, you have a bunch of 3D shape tools. So if you actually wanted to, you could bring in a 3D model and render that inside of DaVinci Resolve for your videos. FBX format is one of the supported formats. When you have one of your nodes selected, and then you click one of these icons up here, it'll try to add the next node right in front of the currently selected node. So if I have brightness contrast selected and I click on color corrector, we get our color corrector node right in front of it. And we can shift the colors on our scene. So we might hyper saturate our scene by increasing the saturation above one. We might hue shift our scene as well. We could take the colors in our scene and shift them towards something else by changing the hue. Of course, you can always hit play, test if you like it. You'll see all of the frames getting kind of pre-rendered there with the green bar. And if you want to turn any of your effects off so that you can see what it would look like without it, you can just select them and you can toggle that specific node off or on. So you can go here for brightness contrast and toggle that off or on. If you're on the edit page, as well, you can turn off all of your color grades, which are anything you do on the color page or your fusion effects by clicking up here. So that will just turn basically everything that you do on these pages off and you'll see the original as it is on just the edit page. So that's another easy way to toggle it off and on. So one of the things that makes the fusion page useful is that you can add a bunch more to this graph and then rearrange things 
your, in order to get your final media output just the way you want it. So I could add some 2D vector shapes to the graph, which would be down here in the shape category. Another way to add those to the graph is to right click somewhere inside of our nodes area and then do add tool. I'll go down to shape and let's get something simple here like S rectangle. Now these vector shapes, they need to go through a S render node before you can actually apply them to the media out. So let's right click add tool. Let's add a shape S render. Okay. So we're going to connect this rectangle shape with this gray box, left click on it and drag the connector to the orange input of the S render. And then these two need to be merged the S render and the color corrector so that we can get our final media output. So I'm going to right click on the node graph, add a tool or go to composite and then merge. So merge can take multiple inputs. So the orange input is the background and then the green input is the foreground as in showing in front of whatever the background is. So I'll take the color corrector, left click on the output and drag a connector here to be the background. And now I'll take the S render and take a connection to the green input. So the two inputs are going to give us our final result. Now uh, you might notice that nothing's actually showing up here. And that's because this is currently displaying the media out node. So if I want it to show the merge node instead of the media out, I can click right down here in the bottom left of the node, the right one to show on the right view. Now, if you want to see two views at once, you can click up here, then you'll have a left view and a right viewer. That's why there's two options here. So now we're looking at merge one, which isn't the final output. Let me click on S rectangle and I'm going to change the color and style. So let me click here and change the color towards something else and hit OK, a little softer on the eyes. OK, so this is how it looks at the merge one node. If we want to take the merge one and make that what feeds into media out, I can click on this connection between color corrector and media out. OK, that removes it if you click on the right side. And now I take the output from merge one to media out. So this is just basically controlling your order of operations. As you can see, it isn't always strictly linear. You might have multiple paths converging with nodes such as a merge node before you go to your final media out. But as I was trying to mention, one of the powerful things is that you can move stuff around quite easily. So I can click on the connectors right side between color corrector one and merge one to remove that brightness and brightness contrast and color corrector. And I'll move this node over here. Then we'll have the brightness contrast feed into the yellow connector, the background of merge one. And let's break this connection. I'll move the color corrector into here, connect merge one to color corrector, color corrector to media out. And now if I take this color corrector node, which comes after all of this rendering of the rectangle. So this has now just been turned into a color on the screen. So right now, nothing has changed showing up here because we're still looking at the merge one node. But if I take media out and I add the right view here, then you'll see that the color corrector is not only affecting what comes from here, but also what comes from here because the color corrector node is further on along the chain. So in the process of playing around with your effects, you may decide that a node you want to apply to part of your overall effect or you want it to apply to all of it. And that'll just become an order of operations thing, which is much easier to see when you have a visual node graph like this. So if I take this color corrector and I put it back where it was originally, and then we connect merge one to the media out, then you can see the color corrector is only affecting what comes from the media input, but it has no effect on the rectangle's color at all. So now changing the rectangle's color is just a result of whatever I choose here. So if I want it to be green, now it's green. But this color corrector node, no matter what I do to the hue, it's not going to affect this rectangle. So that's just a quick look at the Fusion page and some of the different nodes you can use in creating effects. There's definitely more here that you would need the Fusion page to do that you can't just do on the other pages, such as creating 3D text effects from scratch or working with 3D particle systems inside of Resolve, which of course you'll render to a 2D form before it comes to the media output, since in the end all video is going to be output as a 2D image. So if you watch to the end and you're interested in those slightly more advanced topics, 
I have some videos on my channel for doing that inside of Resolve 17. But thanks for watching this beginner's tutorial on Fusion Nodes and DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope it was pretty easy for everybody to understand. I've been Chris. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in my future video content.